Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer straight up review for the game Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game. It's by Steamforge Games, Guerrilla, and of course licensed through PlayStation. This is first and foremost a video game IP where you play as a hunter attempting to eliminate mechanical animals, gathering their parts, and constructing your armor to get bigger and better to go after stronger and more powerful prey. Or you're going to start going for after some of these guys here um, at the very end of the game or as a separate like kind of thing that you want to do. Um, the base game here is going to include pretty much everything you see minus these two big guys, the Thunderjaw expansion and some stuff off to the side here. But what you're going to be doing is setting up scenarios. You'll go from one scenario to the next to the next to the next, attempting to uh, defeat the animals before the scenario ends. You can leave early if you want, but if you do so, it might cost you the ability to uh, progress better throughout the next portions of the campaign. You can make the game harder, more difficult, more challenging throughout the game by selecting more difficult scenarios scenarios, or you can go the easier route, but the game remains the same. It's a semi-cooperative, semi-competitive game in which you're going to work together to defeat the monsters, the mechanical objects, and you're going to attempt to gather victory points, these sun tokens. You can get up to three points if you accomplish your goals and basically do the most damage by defeating or one-shotting each of these units, and uh, then you're going to go through this phase in which you're going to upgrade and get yourself to be a little bit more stronger as you progress throughout the game. Will you score the most points as well as complete the scenario with your fellow hunters or will you be defeated in a scenario where you get defeated by losing all of the units based on the number of players in the game. I'll find out as we talk about my review of the game and I'll kind of give a little understanding of how the game plays as we do that as well. Well let's get into it. Okay so Horizon Zero Dawn is basically a tactics game. You're gonna have a little bit of a deck builder in here and you're also gonna have like units that you'll have to deal with. It kind of reminds me of like Clank and the Hunger in certain ways because you are deck building and then you're utilizing a unit on a board but instead of like going on a straightforward path or having branching paths this is kind of more of a sandbox theme. There's random mechanical beings that are kind of going from location to location kind of ignoring you guys up until you start kind of interacting with them uh, following a certain path or trail, and uh, your objective is to defeat them. You want to defeat them, score the parts off of them, get victory points, be able to craft unique things with this little scrap deck here, and progressively go throughout the game. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you're going to be selecting a scenario, and each of these scenarios is going to tell you how to build it. It'll tell you what tiles you'll use, or what large boards you'll use, as well as locations you'll start on, the types of enemies that are going to be there, and the difficulty based on the number of players. Uh, you'll set that board up, you'll have everybody place on a certain area of the board and then you're going to make sure that you have everything set up for yourself and in the game you're going to be getting a specific character you'll be getting a specific skill tech tree which you'll upgrade as you progressively uh, improve upon the game not being able to go from 16 card decks all the way to 22 depending on the character that can range though as well as you'll be able to choose to either add new cards to your deck new traits to your character or new weapons uh, these characters all have their own unique abilities when it comes to selecting certain things on uh, the characters like when this hunter kills an enemy they can scrap two cards on the bottom of the of their discard pile to gain an additional glory point. Glory points, victory points, most importantly in the game. And then of course you'll have your armor, which is going to allow you to defend against enemy attacks, and you'll have weapons. Uh, you'll be drawing cards from a deck that you start with, and you'll be able to utilize these cards. These cards are kind of like your health, and they're also going to be cards you'll use to defeat enemies. If you run out of cards in your deck, you're going to faint, you'll lose your victory points, and you'll be in trouble. And that's where the deck building portion comes in. Like, you're never going to be continu continuously adding cards to the deck here. It's only going to happen at the end of a scenario. How a turn works is pretty simple. You're going to be picking your character. You'll take two actions. An action could involve running, which can alert enemies next to you, which will give them little alert markers. Uh, then you have the ability to sneak, which can maybe avoid being detected by enemies. You'll have the option to use a ranged attack, and you'll have an option to use a melee attack. And based on the range of your range, is how far you can shoot, and you'll be shooting kind of by counting the tiles, or if you're melee, you're going to be most likely to have to be right next to it or near it, and sometimes enemies can walk into your space. If you uh, don't defeat the enemy instantly, well, most likely at the end of the round, the enemies will have an attack opportunity to attack you, and they all have their own unique cards. They have their own unique system uh, based on which hunter it is they're going to be attacking, how far away they are, and then you just follow the yes-no answers. Are they move one space to the closest hunter if there's one within one square? If not, you move one space to the nearest board edge and remove this enemy from the game if it reaches the end. And so they all have their kind of like own unique instincts as 
as to how they function. And of course the players do as well. One player is going to be a more brute strength melee character, another is a ranged attacker that tries to do the last hits on their char the characters, and uh, other ones are more like combo characters as well. As you progress throughout the game too, you're going to be drawing these stamina cards. If you don't get the cards that uh, you would normally upgrade in your trait deck, maybe you're going to go ahead and choose to upgrade your traits or your weapons, and you'll get increased deck allowance. And if you don't pick up any cards in the uh, buying phase, then you can go ahead and get these things, which basically are kind of like just one life. Unless you draw them, you just discard them to draw a new card. Um, but they substantially increase your deck, or I should say minimally <laughs> increase your deck as the game progresses. Uh, this game has a lot going for it. Uh, first of all, the way that you play it is a lot of fun. Moving around the board, attacking the enemies, working together in certain ways to make sure that you don't lose, but ultimately trying to be the one who's on top, the main hunter. And the way you do that is defeating the enemies, reducing that HP to zero. You'll be rolling dice in the game based on whatever it is that you're attacking with. If I'm attacking with my hunter bow, I'll need an arrow. I'll use my hunter bow's ability, I'll roll these guys here, and then I'm going to score points of damage based on the number of pips on the die. I'll check the enemy's defense and if I can push over that will crack the enemy's defense. It could destroy the enemy, could destroy the enemy's defense. There's a bunch of different things I can do and it will give me additional resources or value or even points depending on how I choose to go about doing it, which all works excellently. The one thing about combat that I'm not super, super satisfied with is the fact that you could do all the damage to the enemy but one and then one person can walk over and pop it and then you lose every they, they get everything and you get nothing now uh, and you could obviously choose to go for the armor which is more likely to score you points but the big amount of damage that you push onto the enemy if you do not get that last killing blow is going to get you no deals uh, i'd prefer to play this game competitively or, or sorry cooperatively or competitively but not semi-co-op especially because you feel like you've been cheated even though you're working together to some extent because there's all ultimately one real winner and then there's kind of like a everyone one wins, but no one ever feels that way in these games. Usually it's just it feels like there's one winner and you just didn't do enough. But the game kind of pushes this last hit scenario to make you feel like uh, you just didn't get the right luck needed at the right time, even though you did the most work or most damage. And I think a lot of people are not going to enjoy that super, uh, super much. Uh, the deck building aspect. So like I said, you'll be defeating enemies. You'll be drawing these cards here and there's going to have little symbols on them, different colorations. And at the end of every single round before you move on to the next scenario here, you're going to be taking a deck based on the level that you're at. These cards are going to be weapons, they're going to be uh, ammunition, there's going to be armor, and you'll be able to buy them based on the cost on the top right, which is based on the symbols on the salvage that you've gathered from defeating the mechanical monsters. And uh, you can kind of equip these to change your equipment around, add new cards to your deck, remove cards to your deck. It's very limited. There's not a huge amount you're going to be doing during this phase because typically you're not going to have a whole lot of resources, even if you defeated a lot of things. So most likely you'll be gathering maybe two to three cards or even zero as each of these different phases uh, progresses. And then you'll move on to the next scenario, setting up a new one, adding new monsters, making them a little more challenging. Players who did poorly will kind of get a little bit of a catch-up mechanic by being able to draw one of these guys here that changes the game. At the start of the encounter, once all hunters have set up, you may switch the starting position of any two enemies. So there's ways that you can kind of uh, mess with the game to allow you to get kind of an advantage. There's other advantages you can get as well. Um, and uh, that's basically the idea of it all. Uh, there's certain characters that are going to be doing different types of damage, whether it be fire damage or lightning damage or frost damage that affect monsters in different ways. You'll be able to get additional victory points if you perform certain things that your character wants you to do. And uh, there's also going to be the damage markers and of course the alert markers indicate when the enemies are going to be attacking or just simply walking across the board attempting to leave the board like or like get out of the board. Um, and you can kind of upgrade the different portions of the board. There's certain spaces that will affect gameplay, whether it be a rock or an outpost that prevent either enemies from seeing you or doing as much damage to you, which is a nice little addition that I appreciate in tactic games when you add stuff to the board to make these spaces mean something and matter. Uh, the fact that you can play against the really big monsters, which have their own unique decks of cards and a huge board, is a really nice twist to it as well, and it makes it feel like 
like a momentous thing that you're going up to fight against a big honking monster. Uh, and I really like that portion of the game. I think that's probably my favorite aspect of the game, in fact. Um, but the game does a good job of kind of reflecting the video game. Now, don't get me wrong, I didn't play a huge amount of Horizon Zero Dawn, but I did play enough to get the gist of it. I watched some video on it. Um, it works. This feels like you're doing what you would want to do in a video game. I think most of my friends who either, I don't know if they played it or not when we played, but they've at least heard of it and seen it as well, and they would agree that the theme and stylization of the game is very similar in equipping weapons and new equipment and progressing throughout the scenarios. It does feel very good. The artwork in the game is excellent. Everything feels very, very mechanical when the, with the monsters, and all the board locations are very grassy and dry and deserty, but it changes how you choose to, how, how you choose to set the board up. And uh, then you also have your unique little decks for each of your characters that are very, very beneficial to you. They'll be able to draw cards uh, and play based on your character's strength and trying to avoid their weaknesses, functioning to try and defeat certain monsters as opposed to others because your character will be better at defeating certain monsters based on what they're trying to do. And of course, the changes of the game as far as the different types of board locations and whatnot. The artwork all kind of molds itself around that, and it feels really good. Even the equipment and the armor, I think it might even be modeling from the game, works great and adds to the theme of it. The quality. All the miniatures are excellent quality. They are highly detailed, they are thick, you're not going to be worrying about them breaking or popping off like some other games. And all the tokens are nice and thick. The cards are high quality, very high quality in fact, and they feel good in your hand. I have nothing bad to say about the quality or, of course, the artwork in this game. I think they did an excellent job with this game as far as that goes. And playability has a lot of replayability. You're going to enjoy playing this game over and over again because the scenarios will always be different. You can increase or decrease the difficulty. You can fight against different monsters. There's a ton of expansions that you can add to the game. And in fact, I think the game, you want the expansions in the game to kind of add that extra-ness to it. I feel like that's when the game is whole is when you have the expansions to play with and the different monsters you can fight against. Uh, the biggest, scariest monster you get in the base game is this little guy right here. He's not really little. He's actually pretty big compared to your character as far as scale goes, but when you're comparing it to like the, the thunder jaw <laughs> or, or the bird over here, the storm storm bird, is just not in comparison. These guys are awesome, and of course, as you can see, I'm trying to uh, I'm gonna start painting this guy here. I just kind of primed him up. Regardless, though, this is a lot of fun. If you don't mind the competitive aspect of one player mainly winning, or you simply want to make it the cooperative or competitive and, and just drop out the semi-co-op, I think you'll have a ton of fun with this game here. There is some wonkiness to it, definitely. The shop phase, the deck building could probably be taken out to just mainly have an upgrade system that you work with on your own instead of having to do all this extraness. There's a lot of extra steps. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's clunky or anything, but it just feels like there's just extra that you're having to constantly do when you just kind of want to get in there and mess with the monsters. But you do that for the majority of the game, and that's the best aspects of it, the tacticalness. I really, really enjoyed Horizon uh, Zero Dawn. Um, it, it's, it's like, you know, an average game, and this is just like right over that. I had a lot of fun with it, but it wasn't super amazing just because there's just little things about it that were kind of like pushing it back. I enjoyed this game definitely more than the Dark Souls board game, and um, I, I think this is kind of like an upgrade and an improvement upon that system as to how you're getting your equipment and working with it. Uh, I think most people who love the Horizon Zero Dawn IP are going to enjoy and dig this game, and if you love painting miniatures, and if you enjoy tactics games as well, this is one I strongly urge you to take a look at. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Horizon Zero Dawn. There's a link down below in the description if you'd like to pick this game up along with any of the expansion content, and there's quite a bit. I only have two. There's more than that. You can also check out the website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our live stream at 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook and Twitch. Subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and comment down below whether this is a game for you or not, whether you'd pick this game up or not, and if it resembles the IP. <laughs> I guess that's pretty much all. I got for you and as always I look forward to defeating the Thunderjaw with you next time.